witnesses here today who are experts in their field who can answer uh, the more technical questions. And I am happy to answer any questions and reserve the right to close. All right. Thank you, members. Any questions for Representative Noble? All right, we'll reserve. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, Representative Tallarico. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Representative Noble. Um, I have lots of questions about this bill. Um, one, I want to first acknowledge that the Ten Commandments are important to me personally, <coughs> important to my faith. I'm sure they're important to many people here on the dais. Uh, and in fact, I think the Ten Commandments are hard to uh, obey, um, and they're meant to be hard to obey. Um, and I don't always think that the legislature obeys the Ten Commandments. So I just want to walk through a couple. Um, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Are you aware the legislature is scheduled to meet this Saturday? I, I am aware of that. So that would be violating the Ten I contend that that is a hard, you're right. Uh, thou shall not kill. Are you aware the legislature has refused to outlaw the death penalty? Um, again, uh, this, we're using the words that are on the uh, the monument because it has been help, help, upheld by the Supreme Court, but we're talking about murder here and not and not justice uh, and the, certainly not war. The translation that I'm looking at in your bill is mm -hmm. "Thou shalt not kill." No. I, absolutely, and that is that. And the reason we are using that language again is because that is the language that has been upheld by the Supreme Court. Uh, Thou shalt not commit adultery. Be true to the one you love. And the second commandment, which I think is the most important, thou shalt not make to thyself any graven image, meant to prevent idolatry, Absolutely. the creation of idols, the idea that some people would try to make an object, maybe two tablets to worship, rather than worshiping the God behind those two tablets. Are you worried that this bill is idolatrous? I do not. Why not? This bill is reflective of, of the principles that we need in our classrooms. And, and as a former school teacher, I know you are too. What do we need more than the reasons why we are doing the things that we're doing? Why do we not celebrate the need to respect others to respect authority. I, I contend that this is absolutely needed. And, um, and I get where you're going with that particular commandment, but it's there and it is historical and it is foundational. Would you be open to an am amendment to the bill saying that if a member of the legislature violates these commandments that we can no longer mandate public school teachers put it in classrooms? It is my uh, intention to keep this bill clean as it came over from the Senate. Uh, I want to talk about uh, religious inclusion. Um, the Supreme Court case that you cited, Kennedy, was about a football coach who prayed on the football field. And the Supreme Court said that the Establishment Clause, the First Amendment in our Constitution, which prohibits the state, a government, like all of us, from establishing a state religion, doesn't apply to that because it's his personal faith, a personal expression of his faith. Your bill doesn't do that, though. It mandates that every single teacher put the Ten Commandments in their classroom. Is there so a difference again, between yeah, yes, there prohibiting a, a, an individual school employee or teacher from practicing or expressing their faith versus the state now mandating that one particular faith be expressed in a classroom? So um, are you referring to the faith of Judaism? Because that's where this comes from. Is sure. that what you're referring to? Yes. I contend that the historic and foundational um, reference of, of the Ten Commandments in our nation's history is what we're looking at here and not uh, not the bunny path that I think you've taken us on. I am not an attorney and I do not play one on TV, but I do have attorneys, uh, an attorney here that can speak to that better than I can. And so um, I would like to defer to to let them answer that, if that's okay with you. Would you be, that's fine, and I can ask the attorney these questions too, um, but as the bill author, I wanna drill down. Would you be open to an amendment that would allow uh, schools to post the five precepts of Taoism, 
One Again, of that is not foundational to our American judicial and educational system. Your bill that was that that does not fit into that that criteria which the court, Supreme Court has set forth. There are many many documents that would that have influenced the American Constitution, including the Code of Hammurabi, the Magna Carta. Would you be open to a teacher posting one of those instead of the Ten Commandments? I am today. That is not my bill. And so, the the major world religions, in addition to Judaism and Christianity, Buddhism, uh, Hinduism, which are represented at our schools, you're not willing to allow one of those uh, commandments or one of those religious doctrines to be posted in the classroom? Again, we are talking about something that has historically been in our education system, in our earliest textbooks in America, were, were these Ten Commandments and 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 actually lots of Bible references were our earliest American textbooks. That's what we're talking about here. I'm not familiar with what you're talking I am familiar with the Magna Carta, uh, but the others I'm not familiar with, and so I can't speak to those. But do you see why, if our First Amendment is forbidding the state from establishing a state religion, that mandating that one tradition be elevated above the rest would be a violation of that First Amendment. I disagree with that because, again, our judicial system and our educational system, this is foundational to them. I've, I've and, listed and other I, things I that are am, foundational as well. I am so... Um, if we don't know where we've been, how do we know where we're, we're going? I, I, I'm, I love history, and this is very foundational to the history of our nation. But I've just listed other documents that are also foundational, and you're not willing to include those in the bill. It's only I this. am not in this bill. I'm, it is my intention to keep this bill clean. So it's only the Ten Commandments? Absolutely. And tell me about, because every time on this committee um, that we try to teach students values like empathy or kindness, we're told we can't because that's the parent's role. Every time on this committee that we try to teach basic sex education to keep our kids safe, we're told that's the parent's role. But now you're putting religious commandments, literal commandments in our classrooms and you're saying that's the state's role. Why is that not the parent's role? That, that's really an interesting rabbit trail that you've gone on with that. Uh, because really what we're talking about here is a historical foundational document to our nation's education history and our judicial history. And, and, and um, I, those other things are great and interesting, but they're not foundational to us educationally and judicially. Would you be comfortable with adding language to receive uh, parental consent from all the parents of students in the classroom before putting it up? I, I would not. I am, again, going to keep it clean as it came over. So you don't want parental consent when it comes to students receiving religious commandments? I don't believe that. I, again, I think that these are foundational to 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 being a good um, to being a good citizen and being a good member of a classroom, and and I know that our teachers are more and more and more having to fight for um, classroom management over the behavior of students, and I don't think that these commandments would uh, in any way. I think these commandments would help with that with that classroom management need. I just. I I want to make a comment, and thank you for answering my questions. I'll probably have more later. But, and I say this to you as a fellow Christian, Representative Noble, I know you're a, a devout Christian, as, and so am I. This bill, to me, is not only unconstitutional, it's not only un-American, I think it is also deeply unchristian. And I say that because I believe this bill is idolatrous, I believe it is exclusionary, and I believe it is arrogant, and those three things in my reading of the gospel are diametrically opposed to the teachings of Jesus. You probably know Matthew 6, 5, when Jesus says, don't be like the hypocrites who love to pray publicly on street corners. When you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. A religion that has to force people to put up a poster to prove its legitimacy is a dead religion. And it's not one that I want to be a part of. It's not one that I think I am a part of. 
You know that in scripture it says faith without works is what? Dead. Is dead. My concern is instead of bringing a bill that will feed the hungry, clothe the naked, heal the sick, we're instead mandating that people put up a poster. And we both follow a teacher, a rabbi, who said, don't let the law get in the way of loving your neighbor. Our neighbor also includes the Hindu student who sits in a classroom, the Buddhist student who sits in a classroom, and an atheist student who sits in a classroom. And my question to you is, does this bill truly love those students? I'm going to go a different direction than I think you're trying to lead me. And that is that a very great wrong was done in our classrooms with that 1980 um, decision because that's that they were, uh, this document was in classrooms prior to that. In fact, I think that this, this bill actually rights a wrong that was done all those years ago based on a, a, what has now been considered a failed decision by the Supreme Court. So I contend that we are righting a wrong, not causing one. Last thing I'll say, and I know we have other, uh, I'm sure there are other questions of the witnesses, is I just worry this is what gives us religious people a bad name, that instead of living out the way of Jesus, we're instead imposing our beliefs on other people. Instead of leading by example, we're leading by mandates. And so I'm very offended by this legislation. I know you and I have worked together and I'm not casting aspersions on you and I would love to work with you. Uh, but it, as it is currently written, I find this to be a deeply